Hi, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. And today we're going to be going over an established, comprehensive chiropractic biophysics patient visit. From analysis on the X, Y, and Z Cartesian coordinate system, and decompression on the Y axis, as well as a full body adjustment using a variety of techniques. And I will also be adjusting the extremities shoulders, elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, hips, knees, feet, toes, everything from head to toe, literally. You'll be hearing a lot of cracks in this one, so let me show you how this works for each and every one of the people that we see here at Advanced Chiropractic Relief. The very first thing that we do in this comprehensive established patient visit in biophysics is we analyze a patient's posture three-dimensionally on the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. Renee, go ahead and close your eyes and flex your head forward all the way. We have the patient close their eyes, now backward all the way, and now neutral. You always watch the range of motion that we see and have them take a deep breath and relax. You keep their eyes closed because that takes their visual plane and visual orientation out of it and shows us the mirror of her true spinal biomechanics. Now as you can see her head is rotated to the right on the y-axis. Her head is also a little bit forward in the z-axis. Her head and neck as a whole are translated to the right on the x-axis and you see how that makes this left shoulder higher. If you look at her hands down here You'll actually see this one looks shorter than this one. It's not. They're actually the same length, but because of the translation of the cervical spine, we're seeing this left shoulder high, and that's what brings this arm up with it. Now, we can tell that she is a side sleeper just by the way she has her head turned, and I can tell that on every single patient. I can even tell you which side they sleep on. Now, also you can see that she has no space over here on the right, so she is translated to the right on the x-axis in her thoracolumbar and lumbopelvic spine as well. She has a little bit of a head tilt to the left, and that would be on the z-axis. There's a rotation on the z-axis. You can either have a positive or negative translation, a positive or negative rotation on each one of the x, y, or z-axis. So we have identified six global postural distortions on her that we are going to be correcting with this treatment. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put her on the inertial extensilizer and decompress her entire spine on the y-axis. You can open your eyes and let's have you lie on the table right here on your back. Now this adjustment is very important for... 90 plus percent of the population because we're standing up in gravity all day long and it's compressing us. As you notice, you've probably seen yourself get shorter in your lifetime if you've got any age to you at all from the height that you were in high school. And that's not coming from your legs getting shorter, it's coming from your spine being compressed and degenerated. Now, if you've noticed, I placed these pins in, locking in her pelvic bones down here, and then push against that to make sure you're up in there all the way. Now, you notice I have her legs up here parallel with the floor. This creates a change in the angle of the lumbopelvic region and sacroiliac region and relaxes the musculature from the pelvis all the way up to the cervical spine. And then you just take a plain wet bath towel, wrap it around the neck, and you want it, the contact point is not around her neck choking her, but in the very back. You're going to notice that I get my fingers right back here on the occiput, and then I just watch her breathing and give it a straight vertical lift on the y-axis. Now, did you feel that all the way through? I did. Yep. <laughs> Very good. She's been needing that too, and I always do their reflexes afterwards to show them that they're still kicking. And then we take this towel out of there. And the very next thing that I'm going to do, while she's in this position, and again, her muscles are relaxed. Perfect. I know you heard those. Excellent. 
We have just adjusted her entire cervical spine from her occiput all the way down to C7. That is a diversified palmar package move there. We lower the legs, but while the patient is still on this table, I'm going to show you what we do with the hips, knees, ankles, and feet. Now, in this position, her left leg is a half an inch shorter than her right leg. She also has a pelvic rotation here. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be adjusting her hip and knee simultaneously. You notice how I internally rotate it. Again, you watch their breathing. Now I'm going to be adjusting her ankle. Excellent. Now I'm actually going to be adjusting her feet. This is very important on people that have plantar fasciitis. Some of you have asked about bunions. Now bunions are a big knot that forms down here, usually on the inside of the great toe or the big toe. So what we do with that is we just take that toe, get a very good grip on it right at the actual uh, joint, right where the toe meets the tarsals, metatarsals. These are the phalanges, the toes themselves. Now you notice I'm getting those right at the end. There you go, you're probably hearing all those. Now, we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the left side. Very good, that got her hip, her knee. Now she's got a little instability in this knee here. There we go, perfect. And again, now I'm getting a contact right on her ankle joint, excellent. And now, there we go, got great movement on that. Now again, the bunions start right here, so what we do is we get a great big contact, pull straight out, there we go. Again, get the contact right where the toe meets the long bones in the foot. And always make sure and adjust that arch back up. Now, just from doing that right there, her legs are exactly even in the supine position or face up. Now what I'm gonna have her do is I'm gonna have her turn sideways and sit up, and we're gonna go over to our biophysics drop piece table, have her lie on her stomach. We're gonna have you put your face right down in here and relax. And you're gonna notice I tilt the headpiece down a little bit. That will spread these joints out. You can see that she's got a little bit of an elevated curve or kyphosis in her mid thoracic spine and her pelvis is translated like we talked about in the posture. So we check her leg length while she's in the prone position too. Now we see that her right leg is short by half an inch here. When I bring it up, see it gets even and that pelvis raises up and torques right there. Did that tighten up in your lower back right there, Renee? Yeah. Now see, we've identified that she doesn't have an anatomical short leg she actually has a sacroiliac subluxation and rotation. So we're actually going to be adjusting the right sacroiliac in the X axis, Y axis, and also Z axis. Now, I'm actually getting on the sacrum or the middle triangular shaped bone in the pelvis. And now, notice how I'm adjusting the left sacroiliac differently than I did the right one. And this is unique to her specific problem. And then, right here, she's got L5. Now see, I can palpate her spine. She's got a little curvature in her spine. And right there is real sore at L5. Now watch the angle on my arm and the line of drive change as I move up her spine. That was L3. There's L2. There's L1. Now I'm gonna be putting some lateral and oblique traction in here. A lot of times when you do this, you'll hear the ribs move in that mid thoracic spine region, which is great. What we're doing right now is we're just stretching out her muscles all the way from the pelvis up to her upper thoracic spine and we are going to be relaxing these muscles so that I can come in here and get a nice easy adjustment and you just wait on them to breathe and relax.
perfect. Now see, she's very noisy. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna put your head down a little bit more and scoot all the way up there for this one. There we go. And just relax your arms down. And we got one more right here. Yep. Yeah. We've actually adjusted all of her rib cage. Now she's got some trigger points right here or knots in her trapezius muscles and many patients do. So what you want to do with that is you want to actually put a deep steady pressure on them. You want to do it at the patient's tolerance and I know hers are sore because she's been on the computer a lot here the last few weeks. Well every day for that matter. Yep. And this contributes to her shoulder pain and her arm pain as well as numbness and tingling in her fingers. But you'll feel these trigger points or knots throughout these muscles in this region. Very good. Now I'm going to lift your head back up. There you go. Scoot back down a tiny bit. Excellent. See, her legs are exactly even. They stay even and her pelvis lines up good. So we've done that. Now I'm going to have her set up and face towards David. Now, this is an adjustment that she needs very bad. Her shoulders get so out of alignment from being forward on the computer all the time. So I check first of all the range of motion of the shoulder through circumduction or rotation. Now I also feel that she's got a bicipital tendon slip right there. And I'm pulling that tendon back in the bicipital groove as I rotate that. And just look straight ahead. Okay. There we go. There, we got that one excellent. That was her right shoulder. Now she's got, there's her right elbow. <laughs> and right there, there we go, is her right wrist. Now you notice that just like the toes, I get a contact way down at the knuckle here. Pull straight out. That old wives tell about getting arthritis if you crack your knuckles is only if you traumatize them like this or like that. This is just a carbon dioxide gas that explodes in the joint space. It doesn't hurt you. So now we're going to go back and adjust her left shoulder. Now this looks kind of funny from the front and the camera position on the patient's part, but I assure you that now look at that. We just adjusted her entire glenohumeral joint, her AC joint, which is the acromioclavicular joint, her clavicle itself, and there is the left elbow, or right, yep, <laughs> and there's the left wrist. Now people with carpal tunnel syndrome and double crush syndrome, this is an excellent way to open up the entire pathway of the median nerve. Excellent. Now, I'm going to have you come down here and sit on the table and put your legs over the end. And I'd like you to lay flat back on the table right there. And I want you to put your arms out, palms up like this. We're going to scoot you down this way just a bit right there. Now you notice I have her shoulder joints directly over this drop piece. So what I'm doing right now is adjusting the AC joints. I'm going to come right here where the clavicle meets the sternum, adjust that, I'm adjusting the left side of her rib cage, which is out, same thing over here, AC joint, clavicular sternal joint, sternoclavicular joint, and the costal sternal joints right there. Now, because she has a little bit of acid reflux and heartburn, I'm actually going to pull her tummy down through her diaphragm, take a deep breath in, let it all out. Now I'm going right below the xiphoid process, which is a little point at the end of the sternum. Yep, you want them to take deep breaths. Now put it out again. Now I'm just actually pulling the stomach back down through the diaphragm. There we go, right yeah. there. Felt that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Big old gurgle happens a lot of times there. Usually the patient will go to the restroom if they've been constipated or had diarrhea within 12 hours of this adjustment. Excellent. Let's go ahead and set you up sideways and face that away. 
<laughs> this is a complete comprehensive patient adjustment but we always finish the patient off with neuromuscular re-education where I adjust the atlas when the posture is mirror imaged with a cervical spine adjusting instrument. So let's come back over here in front of the mirror. This is a high velocity, low amplitude adjusting instrument. And I am going to be having her do her postural evaluation just like we did before. So let's have you close your eyes. Flex your head forward all the way. Backward all the way. Yep, see she's still got some deviation there. Okay, her shoulder's still a little high, not as high. Now, you see how her head's still rotated this way to the right of center. So, have her open her eyes now. We're going to have her lift both shoulders up and back. We're going to rotate her palms out. I am going to help her bring her head straight back in the Z-axis. In the Y-axis, or X-axis, we're going to rotate it negatively. And we're also going to positively translate that. Now, her head was turned to the right. So, see what I'm doing? I'm turning it to the left. And I want you to shift your pelvis just a little bit left. Perfect. Now, I'm going to adjust the atlas right there on the x-axis. I'm going to adjust her occiput on the y-axis. And her lower cervicals right there on the z-axis. Now, we're going to check her posture again. Let's flex your head forward and backwards again, please. Much straighter, much greater range of motion. And there we go. Much improved posture. Did that feel easier that time? It did. Very good. Mm -hmm. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. We'll see you next time.